Hello. We're just going to spend a few minutes today looking at the foramina that you see in the base of the skull. Here is a skull laid base upward. The anterior surface of the skull is over in this direction and the back of the skull, the posterior, is over here. The first and most obvious foramen that you see when you turn a skull up on its base is foramen magnum. This large hole in the middle, and that's why it gets its name magnum. Because it's large. And foramen magnum is where the spinal cord, and in fact at this level it's actually the last part of the brain stem, actually extend to then enter the spinal cord. These two holes just here, and I'm just going to draw them in in a different colour, are artefacts that have been drilled into this skull where it used to be tied to the vertebra. So we'll disregard those. The other key features that you see when you look at the base of the skull is this large bony protuberance here that we all know is the mastoid process. And that is where uh, the sternocleidomastoid attaches. And this rim here is the body of the mandible, or the, or the base of the body of the mandible. And just inside it, you can see the palate here. And uh, this palate, we'll just put a P for palate on it here. P for palate, and the palate is made up by maxilla, maxilla towards the front two thirds, and palatine bone towards the uh, posterior one third. And just in here, you can see some nasal septum sticking through uh, from the back of the nasal cavity. So let's start talking about the foramina that you can see, which is what today is really about. The first foramen that's quite obvious is this foramen just here. And because it sits between the mastoid process and the styloid process, which has been broken off in this case, it's called the stylomastoid foramen. And the stylomastoid foramen is where a whole bunch of the seventh cranial nerve leaves the uh, skull to then head off into the parotid. The next major foramen you can see quite obviously is this one here. And this foramen here is called foramen lacerum. And in fact, foramen lacerum has uh, next to nothing coming through it, a tiny little nerve that we'll talk about elsewhere, but really it's filled with cartilage. So that's foramen lacerum right there. And if you look very closely, you can see just in front of foramen lacerum, just here, a little tiny canal. And that little tiny canal there is called the pterygoid canal. And the pterygoid canal is where some uh, parts of the autonomic nervous system nerves run that in the end they're going to run through here under that piece of bone there to enter the uh, pterygopalatine fossa. The, it's called the pterygoid canal because it's running underneath these two plates of bone here, this plate here and this plate out here which are called the uh, pterygoid plates. And they are the pterygoid plates of the sphenoid bone. The lateral is where I've put the pointer to, and the medial is this one over here. And here's our friend the hamulus hanging off the end of the medial pterygoid plate. Now there's a couple of other foramen to see here. 
The first one that jumps out to me is this one just hidden in the shadows just here. It's quite irregular in its shape and that is where the internal jugular goes and that is the jugular foramen and just in front of it is this canal here. But when you look at it, it's one of the few foramen that when you look at it with the skull lying on the bench like this, you actually can't see the other opening of it. You actually, it actually does a big curve underneath the bone here, and that is the carotid canal. And that's where the internal carotid artery runs through the skull to then join the circle of Willis at the base of the skull. And the other two foramina that we want to just highlight and be sure we've seen is this little one here. And that little one there is called the um, foramen spinosum. And that's where the middle meningeal artery runs as it runs up from the maxilla, maxillary artery to then go into the cranial cavity to supply intracranial structures. And just in front of it, this little oval shaped foramen just here is called foramen ovale. And that's where the uh, uh, mandibular division of the fifth cranial nerve leaves the cranial cavity. So they're the major foramen of the base of the skull. Obviously they're all symmetric left and right. I've just pointed out one side for each of them uh, just for to make the diagram a little easier. But while we're looking at this there's a few other really nice features that are obvious on the base of this skull. Another couple of foramen that we should look at and there's a little pair just here in the palate that we should talk about and these are the greater and the lesser palatine foramen and they are where the greater and lesser palatine nerves exit to supply the hard palate for the greater palatine nerve and the soft palate that would hang off the back of this bone here off the back of the palatine bone here by the lesser palatine nerve coming out of the lesser palatine foramen. And the last thing I want to point out, just because it's an interesting little feature on this skull, is um, these little lumps sitting on the lingual surface of the uh, mandible, and they are, which we'll do separately in a little while, they are the glenoid. Oh, I beg your pardon, they're not the glenoid, they're the, let's just cross that out. They're the genial tubicles. And the genial tubicles are where some muscle attachments are. So that's a summary of all the foramina on the base of the skull. Thank you.